Hey everyone, welcome to this Devil May Cry 5 review on PC. Uh, DMC5, as I'm going to abbreviate it to going forward, is the latest entry into Capcom's long-running action series that started way back on the PS2. Uh, the games have come a long way since, with a pretty loyal fan base that's eagerly consumed these over the last couple of decades now. And uh, With Devil May Cry 5, we're back to the classic setting, which I know many fans were happy with after the relaunch, so to speak, with the uh, other developer making their new Dante. Uh, no, we're back to classic original Dante uh, with uh, all with the continuing storyline of that character. Uh, Dante in this one, he's joined by uh, Nero, uh, once again, who's returning from Devil May Cry 4, and the new enigmatic character known as V. Uh, the plot is honestly not the most interesting part of the game, and they never have been really, acting as a kind of framework for all the action gameplay, but for what it's worth, the fictional city of Redgrave, which is kind of like London, I guess, comes under attack by a giant demonic tree that's called the Clyphod Tree, killing countless number of civilians in the city and feeding on their blood to further grow. Inside is the Demon King, uh, who's simply known as Urizen, I think. Uh, he's the big bad of the story, and basically, you need to kick in from Dante and crew. Things go awry, Urizen kicks all their asses, the heroes have to work their way from the bottom again to become strong enough to defeat him. Honestly, though, outside of the spoilers, it's pretty basic. The main reason you'll want to play this is for all the action. Gameplay, as you can see here on the screen, is a frenetic mix of ranged and melee combat which looks deviously simple, but at its core is very complex once you get to grips with it. Myself, I'm, I consider myself an okay player of, sort of Devil May Cry type games, not the best, uh, but I can get by easy enough, uh, but if you stick with it long enough, you can string together some pretty impressive combos, some which can leave your character still in the air, hitting targets long after you've initially started it. Uh, the big thing here is uh, the difference between each of the characters. Uh, Dante is the lead protagonist, as he's been steadily evolving since the original game. His arsenal of weapons now includes swords, demonic gauntlets, a pair of nunchucks that turn into a three-pointed staff and then into a bow staff, uh, he even has a motorcycle that splits into two pieces that he wields as like two grinding axes. Uh, and that's not even included all the range stuff, uh, which he has, uh, which allows him to spam things like he's got his pistols, ebony and ivory, that he can just air juggle stuff as long as you keep pressing the button down. Uh, he has a shotgun for close range damage that literally knocks enemies back and bounces them off walls. He's got rocket launcher or rocket launchers, depending on what you find. And he has a hat. Yeah, yeah, he has a, he has a hat that the more souls you have allows him. It has a scarf and you can throw it. It's the trickiest one to use, but it is kind of fun. The hat actually lands on enemies' heads and stuff like that. Uh, adding to the complexity are the different stances he has. These allow him to do things in trickster stance where he can uh, dodge in any direction, anytime, midair, on the ground, wherever. Uh, you've got his gunslinger style, so he can just rapidly fire more shots, so he does more damage. Uh, you've got uh, Swordmaster, where that unlocks more types of abilities with, with different melee weapons you've equipped. And then you have the Royal Guard, which honestly I didn't play that much, but it's more of a kind of counter-defensive form. Uh, not, as, not as much fun as the others, though. And trust me, it sounds like a lot. And it kind of is, but the game does a really good job of giving you time to get to grips with all the weapons and the combos as you get to them. They have a training area that's called the Void, and if you go into that, you can basically just practice all of the different moves uh, of each character. And um, if you want to get good with them, you'll definitely want to practice in the Void a lot, just to nail down the, the, the sort of inputs to get the combos right. Uh, then you have Nero. He fights kind of similar to Dante. He has a, a sword and a gun, but he acts completely different again. He has. He also has... Um, he's missing an arm, so he has a robot one in, in place of that. And he has different robot arms that come with numerous flavours of kick-ass, from uh, hands that can grab enemies and perform wrestling moves, doing things like suplexes, triple power bombs, uh, clotheslines, all the rest. Uh, uh, one that can electrocute enemies, he's got one that detaches his arm and it flies around and punches enemies, and then if you do it right as you come back, you can ride on the arm like some kind of hoverboard. Uh, and attack things on the back of that. And then the third character we have is V. He's the enigmatic emo type. He looks a little bit like, you know, um, Kylo Ren. Uh, he's the most unique, though, in the way he plays. He doesn't actually fight. He has summons to do the fighting for him. Uh, you have three in total, and uh, two of them are mapped to your uh, ranged and melee attack skills. So uh, he has a bird one that uh, you, if you spam X, the bird will like fire lightning blasts. And then he, he has this Black Panther creature that sort of shapeshifts into different weapons and you, you, you press the melee attack button and that thing will cl automatically close to the nearest foe and it will start attacking them. And then he has the big one 
that's called Nightmare. And that thing you summon in and it like smashes walls or it, it falls from the sky like a meteorite and it, it basically just turns up and starts like slowly punching stuff to death. It fires like an eye beam that explodes everything around it. It even does like a little Zangief move where it uh, does the Russian cyclone and spins around with its arms out. It's pretty fun. Uh, but it can be tricky because you have to control V's movement and press the buttons to have the characters attack and the different summons have their own abilities. So yeah. It's uh, it's difficult at first. Once you get your head around it, it is fun to play as him. So, so yeah. Now I've talked a lot about the differences of the three characters, but really the controls for all of them is quite simple. Arguably for some, it might be a little too simple. I'd recommend playing this game with a controller as well, by the way. Although Capcom have included mouse and keyboard support, so if you play Monster Hunter World, you and you played it on that, you could probably play this the same way. All three characters work though in the same basic way. They have a single button for ranged attacks, a single button for melee attacks, and you have a special button that's mapped for special abilities that are very context sensitive if you're in the air, on the ground, in the middle of a combat, uh, or different stances. That kind of thing. Uh, should things get too complex for you though, you can enable a auto mode, which basically allows you to press the two buttons, the ranged and melee ones, and you'll perform automatic combos, which some of them look pretty nice. And uh, it's, a, it's a good way of helping players get to grips with the combat if they're new to the system. So, that's a plus in my book. Uh, and this is all on top of system upgrades, by the way. For each character you unlock, you get new movement options, special abilities, and more. You'll be able to unlock uh, all of these abilities that you go through, but you won't be able to do it in one playthrough. You'll have to go through the game again to complete every character's unlock or upgrade tray. And that said, the game does encourage you to replay levels anyways. You can be played through again from the perspective of a different character that has slightly different routes through the level and you encounter different enemies in those and, and you can uh, get more unlocks. Uh, the game also has a very limited form of cooperative gameplay as some levels will feature other characters on their routes and you can encounter them uh, on their run and assist those players in their fights. The major downside though is that the levels are extremely limited in number that have this mode and there's no mode where you can just, at the moment, team up with people. Uh, the game is due to be updated April 1st with the Bloody Palace DLC for free, which might include cooperative gameplay, though at the time of recording, that's, I'm not really sure if that's true or not. A missed opportunity, I'd say, given the effort the developers put in for a cooperative mode in the first place. Now, if I had any gripe with the game, it would be the targeting and camera position at times. Targeting a single enemy is not a toggle uh, option. You have to hold down the button the entire time while you fight the enemy. Uh, this is tied into some of the special moves, so you have to have a target lock to perform a lot of them, like dashing attacks and stuff like that. And without a toggle, you end up pressing the wrong direction and you perform the wrong move, and sometimes the game will outright say you aren't even locked on, even when you're holding the button down. Directional inputs also change based on where the camera is facing, so if you press right, which would normally be for you to go, well, right, it then makes you move backwards, and sometimes up becomes down, depending on where the camera is. And it, it can get a bit awkward, it makes dodging difficult sometimes, because you have to manually reset the camera. The, the issues, they're not game-breaking or anything, they did irk me though, uh, but I'm sure, you know, more time play with it, you can get to grips. Uh, so with all that said though, the gameplay is great. The enemy variety is very good, it has a mix of different... Uh, large and smaller enemies, very fast ones and stuff that you can pass through the floor or they have special attacks, they can keep you on your toes anyway. All of the bosses in the game are quite unique and they are fun fights and I haven't recorded any of those fights because uh, if you're going to play it, it's worth encountering them the first time yourself and, and, and having those battles because they are, as I said, quite fun. Uh, graphically, Devil May Cry 5 is very, very pretty. It has very rich textures, detailed character models for, the, uh, for both the characters and the enemies. The environments look very pretty, though my only issue with the level design is that some of the um, earlier levels look really nice. They feature a lot of the Redgrave City architecture and, and areas to go around. So different urban locations to fight in. And the latter half of the game, you're inside the Clyfod tree, which is visually unique and different, but it's very repetitive. I mean, once you've killed a bunch of enemies in one organic blood tree arena, you've done them all. And this isn't taking away from the textures and the overall look. It's, you know, it's just... Design-wise, it's a little bit bland. Uh, character animations are really good, which is obviously essential for a combat game like this. The mocap for the cutscenes is also very nice, and personally, I didn't have any performance issues playing the game, though I am running it on a 2070 RTX card, but my chip is only a mid-range i5 that's probably a few years out of date by comparison now. My RAM is definitely out of date because it's 16 gig DDR3, but taking those factors into account, it ran really well on Ultra for pretty much everything. 
Um, sound design is really nice. Guns sound powerful and weighty. Weapon impacts are satisfying. The soundtrack is the classic DMC mix of like heavy metal or hardcore techno type stuff. It's very good. Uh, voice work is uh, optional between Japanese uh, dialogue track or the English one. Uh, personally, I think the English cast did a good job. Um, it's nice to have the option though for Japanese dialogue because I know a lot of people do enjoy uh, hearing the original uh, voice work being done there. And I'm sure the Japanese stuff is just as good, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, in closing, it's a great game. It has a lot of depth to its combat and a good incentive to replay for all important completionists. Whether this is to do things like getting triple S ranks on all levels or just to max out each character. If you haven't played Devil May Cry before, it's a good introduction to the series. As a returning fan, you'll be happy because it's, once again, it keeps it within, you know, classic Devil May Cry, not the, the reboots they did. Uh, it could be considered quite short. You could finish it easily in a day. It's not one of those games that you're going to have a huge amount of first-time playthrough average. I think I did it in about six or seven hours, uh, depending on your play style. But that isn't bad when stacked against other Devil May Cry titles, which are also relatively short. You do it mostly for the action gameplay and perfecting your skill. And uh, yeah, overall, I'd, uh, I'd I'd give the recommendation Devil May Cry 5. Whether you want to pick it up now as a, as a full price title or as a or as a sale, I still think it's worth uh, playing it at some point if you have an interest in these kind of games, uh, similar titles that I could bring to mind. Onimusha, which is also Capcom. You've also got God of War series. It's those kinds of games, you know, big, grandiose boss battles combined with uh, a lot of uh, very slick combat gameplay and just, you know, good arcade fun with a plotline that you don't have to pay attention to. It's just there for, for to act as a nice set dressing, give you somewhere to kill things, a reason to be smacking stuff around. So, yeah, it's fun. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So, um, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good week. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.